suddenly assumes a shape. And uh, <coughs> this work formed out of the fact that uh, after my therapist, whose name is Joan Stein, is Joan Stein, um, uh, got out of the hospital and just forming language again, but never able to read. Uh, and very debilitated in many ways, could pick up that pencil and start drawing again, and then start painting again. The thing, the talent that she had when she was 17 years old, that went dormant through rejection, as if she were a plant. You know, and you lop off the top of a plant, and then it starts side growth, growing out of the side node. As if she were like that, she began um, at, an, at an advanced age to pick up a talent she had abandoned in her youth, and uh, continues to paint. Is very much alive, and we actually um, we speak on the phone. Uh, uh, to remain in contact as uh, now two people, one of whom me remembers all of the details, the other of whom her remembers the core of the emotional bond between them. So here's another episode in that story. As you can see, there are a lot of pieces of paper sticking up in here. Um, because I prepared for you, but they slipped a little bit, so I have to find this poem now. Uh, the Pottery Jar. Thank you for asking me not to smoke. Thank you for the extra 10 minutes, no charge. Thank you for knowing the smoke that seeped beneath the heavy gray apartment door was war poison from afar. Thank you for your shaped haircut. Every therapist should have one. Thank you for not condescending to that Navy man who had such bad depression era karma. He secured the soles of his shoes with rubber bands. And the farm girl who leapt from reading books behind the barn into her book of life. Chapter 2, post-war, in which the wounded Navy boy threw his farm girl down the cellar stairs. Thank you for your posture both upright, when I was so mad I declared I could break the antique pottery jar on your shelf. Chapter 1, 4, it's always backward in the analysis, isn't it? Thank you for reading my injured mother who aided a game her child played wherein the little girl walked with a cane bandaged from head to toe and she torn up from kitchen rags. Thank you for warning me on the phone that now you'd be walking with the cane. Thank you for not believing me when I said I was suicidal. My dad had died and evaporated into smoke. That rageful man, yes, slowly, I admitted, I have had this gene. <laughs> Bomb vaporous beneath the heavy gray apartment door. How could you take her seriously, a young woman living along from paycheck to paycheck in a studio on the Upper East Side rehearsing Sylvia Platt? <laughs> she opens the stove, crouches down on the floor, and stops before she wraps her head on the open oven door to think. How sticky this is. <laughs> Thank you for waiting decades for her to acquire a sense of humor as well as better clothes. 
After I declared I'd break the gray jar with navy blue patterns, after your posture bolt upright in your chair, you said, you will not. What if the farm girl on the cellar stairs had shouted, you will not. When I reached for that dish towel to lay on the oven door, practicing my mini death in response to Daddy's falling, then positioned my head on the checkered carry cloth, I must have thought, you will not. Thank you for addressing me as honey. Thank you for carrying me when I had no money. Thank you for waving goodbye as that young woman set off to cohabit with a man who wore a bathrobe till five in the afternoon and smelled the bulk of sobriety cigarettes. Thank you for the welcome back. <laughs> Thank you for your applause as she changed the locks and the password to the bank account. For now she had a bank account. Thank you for filling the pottery jar with mimosa. Thank you for her patience as she decided the moral act would be abortion. Thank you for knowing I could never have children and survive. Thank you for all those years when my sister was alive and waiting in the wicker rocker as I lay on the couch and came to the beachhead vision of my sister down a great old, flirting and begging me to hold her hand as I crawled, crawled to the edge of the sand where the crevice began. It was far, it was far, it was far. Reaching down, knowing the edge would crumble. Thank you for not calling for a sociopath. <laughs> Thank you for witnessing this use of the imagination. I began to creep away from the crevasse. It was away from the ocean of her heroin addiction. The call, the money, the mess. Thank you for poise and ease. Thank you for simply standing as I learned how to stand on the sand. Thank you for repeating that now you'll be walking in the game. Thank you for those occasional cups of tea. Thank you for the boundary, perimeter, thin blue line on a gray pottery jar. <laughs> Drawn line, fine line, fine distinction. Thank you for your swan gay, this and gay book. Thank you for watching as I achieved my distinction. Thank you for taking the young woman's friend in the square vaporizing the smoke before her very eyes. Thank you for the article schedule. They never passed in the hall. Thank you for that silhouette I saw wearing your earrings and belts as I stood at a podium before a darkened theater. The vast audience unmoved after I failed to entertain. Thank you for tolerating that woman's wild hope of a genetic link to Thomas Love Peacock, <laughs> whose satirical glee straightened her spine as she walked off stage or refusing the routine after dinner drinks. How long does a girl have to wear a gas mask anyway? Thank you for repeating. I know. I can't always speak the right words. For your stroke erased many words. 